Lord be with you. Praise be to God. Good morning, everybody. Are you warm yet? Now, where I was, it was minus one degree this morning. And I, when it's like that and it's minus, I always access the, we call it the A-Lady, Alexa, every five minutes to find out how it's changed. And I've never been anywhere before that'll start out with a minus 10 degrees and by 2 o'clock, it's 45, you know? Uh, God's nature is indeed wonderful. And if you don't like the weather in New England, just wait a minute, as they say. For announcements this morning, um, Wendy Bossy has put on a display in the library bulletin board. Anyone wishing to reserve the bulletin board for future months or events is encouraged to sign up on the poster to the left of the board. There's a, uh, the trustees are now in the process also of, of looking at for the projects that are being done, et cetera, uh, to maybe commandeer uh, the board uh, at some point just to, for you to see some beautiful photographs of uh, what you'll see as uh, repairs and renovations in this wonderful, beautiful church. There's a bulletin board insert from the NOW team regarding a clothing drive for gym clothing. And please consider donating these items by next Sunday, March 3rd, so we can provide them to Denise Hamlin, who we work with for the uh, Pen Pal program. Please remember to bring in baby bottles for the Pregnancy Care Center by next Sunday, March 3rd. I can't believe that we're beginning another month. It's gone by quickly. An announcement that uh, mark your calendars for March 16th, boiled dinner here, sponsored um, by the safety committee. Also Easter baskets will be available and the uh, suppers from 4.30 to 6 p.m. Thank you. Are there any other announcements that we need to mention this morning? Okay. Uh, I know this is impromptu, but uh, Neil, I'm going to ask either you or Melanie just quickly to speak to the speaker we had here yesterday, because it's United Methodist Men, uh, either one. Uh, yes, we, for quite a while, we were trying to uh, coordinate with our own Dr. Sam. Um, she's, she's been away for I don't know how long to get the certification to be uh, a specialist with uh, drug rehabilitation. And she, we finally landed, we hooked her, and she gave a, a tremendous um, presentation yesterday on where she's been, and what she's doing, and uh, it was pretty well received. She did a great job, but it was very good to see her because she's been away for a long time, but as I said, she's one of our own, and so we were very happy to have her. And she's worked with Melanie on some things, I guess, Melanie. Um, one of the things we're aware of is the drug program that's going on uh, in our area, and the different drug houses we have. Um, and Dr. Sam is in the process of compiling some resources. And the other thing was, one of the parts of her speech yesterday was a testimonial of a uh, recovering uh, drug abuser. And one of the things that I let her know about yesterday, and uh, as well as Pastor Rich, is that the Road to Recovery house that's on the corner of River Street and Main Street, Tonight at five o'clock, up oh, it disappeared. Could you hold that for a sec, Neil? Um, okay, there we go. Um, Dr. Mike and the people of the Caribou Assembly uh, of God across the street, they're having a night of hope filled with testimonies given by a group of men from the Adult and Team Challenge of Maine. 
and it's going to happen tonight at 5 o'clock at the uh, United Assembly of God. And they're asking people to come um, to uh, get a better understanding of what it's like to be consumed by addiction, um, what it's like to recover from addiction, um, all the stigmas that are in block, blocks that are put in their way as they try to recover. Um, what we heard yesterday was very eye-opening for those of us that came. So if you are so moved, it would be nice for us to get a better understanding and maybe this is something that you've been looking for for an answer, Pastor. Well, you know, as we've said, we need to keep our radars up and in the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will compel us to be thinking of things that will help uh, people in the community and around us. And I believe that that presentation was recorded yesterday. Yes? All right. So once we get uh, the approval for its distribution within the congregation, um, there will be DVDs you can have of that presentation that you can enjoy in your convenience and listen to. Yes? Oh, all right. Then we'll produce, we'll get together after the service at some point and talk about, uh, you know, how many to make and how to make them available to you. Uh, we don't necessarily have an approval to go on to social media, but uh, um, we'll, we have to be able to clear that with, with her, so we will do that as well, okay? Thank you. It was, it was a very eye-opening time. All right, so can the members of the, oh, any other announcements? No? All right, so can the members of the Shaw Ministry just come forward for a few minutes? Saints, one of the most uh, successful ministries is uh, just the act of giving prayer shawls, albeit, albeit uh, a pocket square or a huge shawl. I'm waiting for someone to make an Afghan, Afghan size shawl, but for families, for families. But <laughs> you should be see Bobby's face right now. But you know, saints, what exists in our file are also testimonies from people who've received this gift, you know? And uh, even, uh, Diane, from your recent, uh, uh, you and Brian's, recent, uh, Bruce's recent trips back and forth, okay? Uh, it is a very low-impact way, once you give it, for someone to feel the presence of God. So I would love to be able to somehow put that together that we could put as an insert in, uh, uh, you know, the updated uh, brochure of the church so people could see that this is actually more than just, you know, how much is it going to cost me to buy it? I know someone asked you that question. All right. So, saints, we're going to um, uh, bless these shawls. So if you could turn towards the shawls. Please stand if you can. Lord, we ask you to bless each and every one of these shawls. And we know, Lord, that, that those who wear it have, exi uh, have been able to experience the love of God in some way, shape, or form. So, Lord, bless the hands who made them and give them through the power of the Holy Spirit the opportunity to give them. And that everyone who wears them, touches them, is part of that experience. May they feel, Lord, your love and your grace. May you for them make a way out of no way. And if someone who receives this, these shawls, are compelled because they know there's someone else in need, Lord, may they be able to give those shawls to someone who you've touched them with the knowledge that someone is in need. And Lord, let them let us know 
that they just need another one to replace it. That's happened several times, Lord. But we place it in your capable hands, Lord, to bring us the opportunities, the prayers, and just the motivation, Lord, to just continue this wonderful and blessed ministry. Lord, we ask all this in your holy, precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Please stand for a call to worship. Would you please join me in the call to worship? Let us turn our minds from human things. Our, our faith, faith in, in Jesus, Jesus saves, saves us. Let us set our minds on divine things. Our, our faith, faith in, in Jesus, Jesus saves, saves us. We will deny ourselves and take up our cross. Our faith, faith in, in Jesus, Jesus saves us. We will lose all that we may gain all. Our, our faith, faith in, in Jesus, Jesus saves us. Please remain standing for our opening prayer and please read with me in unison. All honor and glory to you, O God. Your mercy knows no limit and your love knows no death. You hold out your hand and the afflicted are healed and the poor are fed. Your benevolence is steadfast and your promise is sure from generation to generation. Please be seated. Let each of us take a moment in silence to approach the face of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in our own personal words of prayers of confession. Saints, as we bring our personal confessions to a close, we know that our Lord and Savior hears us and is with us and has given us the freedom of choice. Saints, let us, with our freedom of choice, choose Christ. And when we openly confess our sins like this and are repentant about it, that means we remorsefully are sorry for what we've done wrong in our lives. We look to Christ to be able to help us and to wipe us as clean of our sins as the new driven snow and as far as the east is from the west. Brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thank you. Let's stand for our opening prayer, hymn number 96. Praise the Lord who reigns above.
Please be seated. Hmm. Now we have the mystery box, and I understand that we couldn't have it last week. Do we have the mystery box, Gwen? talk about it or not? All right. Okay. There you go. Okay, so you brought this mystery box in today. No, the first thing I saw was the towel. Yeah. Well, I did that so it wouldn't be. I know. Oh, I know. I know. She did that so it wouldn't be. Yeah. Huh? Well, that's an old school bell. A school bell? Yeah. Okay. And How old is it? Well, it goes back to the 1800s. To the 1800s? Yeah, because it was. Oh, is that on? Yes. Oh, I forget to talk into it. Uh, my mother-in-law, great grandparents. Your mother-in-law's yeah. great grandparents? Yeah. And her mother uh, lived to be a hundred. A hundred years old. And the grandmother lived to be ninety-eight. Ninety-eight. Okay, so longevity so in your family. Back. Wow. All right. How did they happen to have the school bell? That I don't know if they were teachers or not. Well, I seem to me I seem to think that when it's dinner time. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. Who knows? Like Who knows? To ring it for the kids but I'll tell you, I'm a digital guy. Yeah. But still, there's nothing that can really reproduce the sound of the real thing, is there? Yeah. Um, you know. Awesome. All right. Thank you. So, so. Oh, bell. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'll, uh, um, let me see. Let me think for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> How many of you have seen the television show that has Parson at the end of the show that said, Good night, Billy Bob. Okay, Good night, you know, the Waltons. The Waltons. Has anyone watched that recently? So many people I've seen in, in, in visiting them at di in different churches, when they're at home and when they have been members of a church for a long time, and I begin to wonder why, why that is. They may spend as much time as possible watching the older things on television. Karen and I will sit and watch the Andy Griffith show, you know, with Andy, and, and there's always a moral to the story. And the thing is, with television, uh, a long time ago, every problem that ever comes up in the world can be solved in 24 minutes. Right? But we're mindful of something like this. Oh, it's also got a date on it. No, it's, all right, it's got a really nice etching on it. Okay. Wow. If any of you... Someone says, you can call me anything, just don't call me late for supper. Don't call me late for supper, right? Does anyone, when you were a kid, how were you called home for supper? Anyone? Yes. Yoo-hoo, Diana. <laughs> Yoo-hoo, Diana, okay. All right, anyone else? When I was a child, we used to come to visit my grandfather in Fort Fairfield. In Fort Fairfield, and yeah. Okay, excellent, excellent. Well, for some reason, I mean, I had gotten a nice sign last year that said, uh, uh, it's a good life on the porch, because I would sit with Thurston on the porch in the rocking chairs and people would come by, and, and what I'm hoping to do is get some singers to come by, and we'll just, uh, 
put the amplifier up and, or whatever and just sing for the neighborhood, you know? But somebody where I was last time ended up giving me this triangle. And I said, what's the triangle for? To call people to church. So I'd say, ding a ling a ling ling church, church. And when people in the local area heard it, it was church time. I guess what I'm saying is I hope this is a... I hope for you that you have the same way when we look at scripture, a favorite scripture to be able to call upon. I hope and pray that you develop the skill to be able to see in nature. Someone just mentioned it during the Bible study. Oh, nature, that's where I see God. Right? And, and, and why is that? Certainly, sir, you see God in nature. I mean, you paint it. Mm. Okay. So that we all develop a skill to be able to have things in our life that reminds us of the love of God. You just look at it, it's the love of God. I mean, I know your kids and grandchildren and great-grandchildren look just wonderful and they're precious in your eyes, and to have them up on the wall is to remind you of how much you're blessed, to remind you of these lives that, that have touched your life. So it doesn't have to be digital or old. It just has to remind you that it's time to come to Christ in prayer, in just your daily thought. That's praying unceasingly. We're going to talk about uh, how the Lord is leading us in prayer today. Okay? Thank you for this. And if you don't mind, I'll probably use it during the benediction. <laughs> so I'll make sure you get that back, if I can remember that. All right. Um, who wants this mystery box for next week? Anyone? I want to remind everybody that next week is communion. And uh, the following week, the 10th, I'm going to be at Lidstone doing communion there. But we have a special treat in that uh, the Certified Lay Ministry Group, I'm working with uh, Kim Miller and Cheryl and uh, uh, Melanie to help Kim walk through her call because she's trying to decide how the Lord is calling her towards ministry. And uh, she's been very involved in the church, and people seem to like her, and she has quite a loving spirit. So uh, I've asked that group to really orchestrate the service on March 10th. Okay, so uh, Kim is writing the uh, message for that, and she's now visiting her father, who is uh, out of the hospital and she'll be back. Um, so I know you'll do a wonderful thing for the, for the box next week. Thank you. Okay. The Old Testament Reading is Psalm 22, verses 23 through 31. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you who fear the Lord. Praise him. All you, all you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflict afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear me. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him, 
for dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall not all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. And would you stand for the gospel lesson? And that is Mark 8, 31 through 38, found on 40, page 44 of the New Testament. Jesus foretells his death and resurrection. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. But what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of them, the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The word of God <coughs> for the children of God. Praise be to God. Thank you. Please be seated. Good morning, Saints. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 to 38, Jesus is predicting his death and resurrection to his disciples for the very first time. Needless to say, most of the disciples didn't know what to make of that. But of course, Peter, headstrong Peter said, no, certainly that's not going to happen. And Jesus said, it must happen. It must happen for his destiny and for the will of Almighty God. This takes place in Caesarea Philippi, where Jesus has taken his disciples away from the crowds to privately reveal his important truth to them. I want to talk to you this morning about two things that you need to take seriously. First, is that the world, including you, you're being spiritually bombarded. Do you feel it? I mean, it seems that no matter where you turn, there's some sort of negativity or there's some sort of statements people make that could be incendiary. You turn on the television, there's always someone at war with someone else. John 13, 27 reads, As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered him. So Jesus told him, What you're about to do, do quickly. This is a season, folks, for exhaustion. People are depressed, especially in this season. And loneliness is very burdensome. Now, some people will be spiritually blind to this, not aware that we are affected by negative energy, shall we say. But Christian believers whose eyes are open to the things of the Holy Spirit, they'll realize 
that there are forces at play trying to bring unrest and separation between us and Almighty God. I mean, Lord knows, literally, how we try to take time to, uh, time to pray. And things always seem to bombard us that might take us from doing exactly what we want to do in prayer. I felt it over a, at least a decade that things of the Spirit have grown more oppressive. And as we get closer to the suffering and death of Jesus Christ, that's apparent. So forewarned is forearmed. How are you preparing yourselves to navigate these challenging days? Don't get caught up in a drama that keeps your focus on the negative and away from God. It's not that easy. My mother used to say, before you say something, if you're going to say something that's not positive, count to ten. Sounds corny, but you know, I've tried it myself several times, and it seems to work. So the first point I want to make to you is you need to wake up and realize your sensibilities, your perspectives, your peace of mind, and the filters that keep you in check with your faith are all being bombarded right now. Wake up and be mindful that you need to constantly invoke Christ's presence, even if it's, God, help me, please, or Lord, give me strength. And just someone coming in here yesterday down the aisle, I heard someone say, God, help me. I rely upon Christ's guidance for our lives all throughout our lives. However, being a disciple of Christ comes with a cost. Scripture says, a cost that we must be willing to pay. And that doesn't matter if you're elderly or if you're a baby, if you're a child. Jesus tells us three things about that cost of discipleship. Discipleship requires sacrifice. And it demands that what we want takes a backseat to what Jesus wants. It's a denial of self, and that invokes taking up our cross. And in verse 34, we hear, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Have you heard that phrase before? So when I was doing some research online, I'm finding all these different headlines that come up from Google and Bible Gateway and stuff like this, and one of the most prevalent questions is, why do I need to carry a cross? Well, as disciples, you and I are called to put aside our own desires and preferences and submit our own dreams and desires, ambitions and control to the will of God. It doesn't mean that we don't have any dreams anymore or desires anymore or ambition anymore. It's just that we need God to bless them and guide us and work with us through them and the Lord guiding us to keep us on the straight and narrow. Just like Jesus sacrificed for his life and sacrificed his life for us, we're called to make sacrifices for him. Are we living for ourselves or are we actually letting God come into our everyday life? So it's understandable that in this season of Lent, when the oppressive nature of the season can be upon us, we can become so steeped in negativity that we're determined to control, not willing to empathize with the other person. It overwhelms us and engages in negative discourse uh, in a way that weakens our ability to think like and react like Christ. For example, right now we're in the middle of a book study based on Adam Hamilton's best-selling book, Making Sense of the Bible, which in many ways was eye-opening. And in last week's video introduction, now granted, this is a newfangled version of one, but anyway, Adam held up a simple colander. This is one that fits on the corner of a sink. So what is this designed for? It's not 
to protect me from something up here by wearing it as a mask or something. But he said, you know, you put spaghetti in it. And then you put it under the sink, uh, wash the, any extra starch off of it, and then water ends up coming out of the colander. And you're left with what? What you need and what you're looking for in the first place, the spaghetti. Now, that oversimplifies it, but he told us that a colander allows us to keep what's important, like the spaghetti and the water drains away. Adam calls what we needed to keep are the two most important commandments God dictated and created. Designed by God, love your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul and love your neighbor as yourself. The two most important commandments. Everything else pales in comparison, so no matter what you, that water contained, if it had the spaghetti, we need to make sure that what we need is what we retain. Everything else that falls through the holes are things that are human-touched, are things that we need to wrestle with, he used that term. What comes out of the colander is something secondary, something set apart from God, from God's two most important commandments. We need to develop an ability to hold on to the word of God and strain out all that is not love and strain out all that are issues that are man-made or man uh, manufactured or altered or uh, inspired by man. And those are the things we choose to wrestle with in Scripture with help of the Holy Spirit. In verse 34, take up their cross and follow me implies that being a disciple means willing to face opposition, persecution, and even death for the sake of the gospel. It also means being ready to bear the burden of following Christ, whatever and wherever that may be, so we can better love our God completely and love our neighbors. So, brothers and sisters, when I ask, are we ready to face hardships and sufferings for the sake of the gospel, so that we may have eternal life someday and now be in the will of God? How does that sit with you? How might that message of facing hardships resonate with people out in the community who are hurting? How might that knowledge that being a disciple of Christ may be messy sometimes, and what does that mean for youth in our communities and more? Truth be told, I wrestle with that as well when I look at ministry. I mean, we live in a society of people wanting instant gratification. So much so that there used to be, I think, a commercial on television with a single hot dog wrapped in plastic you could put in your microwave and then you can feed yourself or someone in the family. Hmm. People want the benefit now. They expect to get what they want now. There are people in our midst suffering now. There are families living out in the streets now. There are wars and violence all around this world now. Now, if anyone's ever been involved with human resources in corporate America, there's a pyramid called the Maslow Pyramid of Needs. Is anyone aware of it? Well, I'm not going to show it, but I am going to read something to it, uh, from it to you. It's a pyramid that at the very bottom, the thing that carries the most weight, but there's five, as, um, depth anyway, equal things. What Maslow is saying is that a person needs to fulfill those and they fulfill it level at a time and if one of those levels are missing, they won't go to the next. First is psychological needs. If the people we are ministering to and praying for are worried about air quality, water, food, shelter, sleep, clothing, and it even says it says kindly, reproduction, you get the drift. 
But that's the very basic needs. If we're doing ministry and want to do ministry for someone and we don't take that in consideration, they're not going to be thinking about the things that are at a higher level because they live on that base level of human needs. Above that is safety needs, personal security, having a job, resources, health, and property. Unless they have those, they're not going to be looking ahead towards the next, which for us is extremely important for getting people in touch with God, and that's love and belonging. Friendship, intimacy, family, sense of connection. And the next higher is esteem, respect, self-esteem, status, recognition, strength, freedom. And the top of the list is self-actualization, a desire to become the most that one can be. But that's furthest from their mind if they don't know where to sleep that night. It's the furthest from a child's mind who hasn't had anything to eat all day and doesn't know where the next meal is coming from. Do you understand is that, that we can preach eternal life and we can preach the love of Jesus Christ, but unless we connect that love of Christ to someone across all those levels, they're not going to be able to understand what we're saying. So when people say, boy, we need to have uh, more youth in the church, or we need to be able to have uh, something that, that uh, you know, brings kids in or interacts with kids, unless somehow they're connected with the love of God and their needs are met somewhere, they can't even fathom the glory and the love of Christ. So, to someone suffering and in great need, the idea of sacrificing ourselves for others can seem difficult, if not a bad idea. Especially in today's skeptical world, we're bombarded with messages in society that tell us to put our own happiness first and our own success above all else. But Jesus urges us to look beyond ourselves and to consider the needs of others wherever they are. Jesus asks us to walk in his footsteps now and embody his love and compassion in all that we do now. Hmm. But the task before us, saints, in order to make Christ real and relevant for people who are suffering today is to translate the gospel and the good news now. Sharing the hope and the forgiveness that Christ offers us now. Hmm. Ultimately, it's not about giving gym clothes to school kids in need. It's not about giving out shawls blessing shawls, or sponsoring school children in camp. No, these things are but the awesome mechanisms we use. Blessed by God, prompted by the Spirit, to connect the hurting people in this community to the love of God through Jesus Christ. Wesley would call that practical divinity. And no one church program is ever greater than the two most important commandments of God to love your God and to love our neighbor as yourself. The cross we carry is so that Christ is ever before us and our hearts are open to God as a major part of our lives and we are in direct communion with the Holy Spirit, be we young or middle-aged or elderly. What will make Christ relevant, especially for those in need, is to be the gospel ourselves now. Put your money where your mouth is, as the saying goes. Don't be invisible to those who are in need. We can look forward to eternity with Christ one day and work every day towards his kingdom. And we feel the love and the hope of Christ today. But we're called to make Christ's love tangible and relevant where the hurting are now. And they're not always in front of us. You know, Almost 20 years ago, uh, I don't remember whether it was in, during a church ministry exercise or during a supper, but a middle-aged man, non-churched, came up to me and said, if you're the church, and I was a pastoral assistant, I wasn't a clergy yet, you know, if you're a church and Jesus loves me, why isn't he doing something to help my life be better? Someone shouldn't have to wait for Christ's love, should they? 
Saints, what are we collectively and individually doing as we carry our crosses to be an extension of Christ? How do we help to make someone's life better? And what are we doing to ensure that people know and eternalize that Christ loves them and that they're not worthless or forgotten? That's what the goal of our ministries, like the prayer shawls and visitation and uh, traveling home communion, community suppers are trying to do, and uh, the different programs through the Nurture, Outreach, and Witness team. All of them work together to help empower this body of Christ in making people's lives better and helping them know the love and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here in this place and in this community in need, by doing so, we're helping people experience a relevant Christ who genuinely cares about them now. You know, at the end of the day, saints, it's not about the money. Basically, it's what do you want to stay in the colander and what do you want to take out of that colander? It's about allowing ourselves to carry our own respective crosses and in that empower each person at Gray to use their gifts and faith so we can each better do the will of God. And as we've seen, money follows. As we've seen, ministries follow. As we've seen, with the Holy Spirit, there are ideas that you guys, being so creative <laughs> and spirit-filled, come up with that we end up talking about and making it work. Carrying the cross of Christ keeps us, brothers and sisters, attentive, on guard, watching, and willing to be the living gospel now. And that takes effort and a clear mind centered on Christ. And it gets more difficult as we get closer to Jesus' death on the cross. It gets more difficult to be centered on the positive. So don't feed into the negativity. Christ emphasizes that worldly gain and self-preservation are not worth sacrificing one's soul for. So we need to keep our eyes on Christ and put that into the colander Hamilton spoke about. All the issues that weigh us down and compel us to be negative, let, it, let the stuff that is not necessary shift through, sift through, so we can concentrate on the will of God. Don't fall into the trap of taking up an argument or being negative. Focus less on what you'd rather do and instead focus more on exhibiting love and trust. Like Christ, if not, it's going to weigh on you. Instead, take up your cross. Understand that God goes with you and find a way to let someone know about the love of Christ you yourself experience. For the Lord in your experience has given you something no one else has, and that's your knowledge of how the Lord touched your life. There's somebody that needs to hear that, and you should do it now. May the Lord add his blessings to this word and these thoughts. Amen. Can we stand and sing hymn number 424? Must Jesus bear the cross alone?
please be seated. We now come to the time of the service where we'll offer our tithes and offerings. So may the ushers come forward to accept this morning's offering. Oh, precious Lord, we answer with Alleluia. I know you do. I know you do. And Lord, the Lord loves to hear it. And the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And everything we have, we have because the Lord's love for us. So, Lord, we ask you to accept this humble offering. We ask you to make it someone's mission, Lord, to be able to take this offering and use it in your service, in this community, and in this church. And may you continue through the power of your Holy Spirit to listen to your voice and to help us take the gospel that we know it in our own way, in our own living of lives, to reach out and help someone who is in need. Lord, continue to bless us with all the gifts that you've given us and help us make our own lives to you with our resources and our gifts and offering to your mission in this world. Lord, we ask all this in your holy, precious name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And now is the time that we Respond with prayers, praise, and thanksgiving. And remember, and raise up people who are on our prayer list. I must share with you, some people came to me after the service last week and say, ooh, I forgot the Lord's Prayer. First time in 20-some-odd years that I forget to do that in the, in the worship bulletin. But the fact is, saints, when people brought that up, I said that's a good thing. Because you missed it. You missed, and it's not by route, you missed invoking the Spirit of God this way. Hmm. Lord, bless the people who we're reading right now, the names on our list. Lord, blessings on Del Ramey. Do we have an update on Del? He's home, and he's doing well. Awesome. Excellent. And his daughter's with him. 
Lord, continue uh, Dell's uh, healing from his accident. Anna Roberts, Leland Frost, Sylvia Akeley, Linda Sear, Debbie and Lou Sharp, Richard Card, Norm Collins and family, Erica LaPlante, Arthur Philbrick, Rodney Johnson, Gwen Ellenwood, Ralph Ferguson, Ivan Shaw, James Stewart, Dee Dee Nichols, Don DeMerchant. Mm. And when we're praying for Norm Collins and family, Norm had passed away. Prayers for his soul and his family. Mm. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else we need to pray for today? Okay. Um, I want to. I want to make sure you have a microphone. Okay. Thank you. George is under the weather this morning, and my son David Nor and family, they have COVID. Hmm. Okay. And we'll pray for them that they're, uh, they get better and they remain safe. Hmm. Yes. Again, for Diane Levesque, who's still in a coma in, uh, from the fire in Portland. Pray for her recovering from, uh, and she's in because of the fire. She, she's in a coma, a medically induced coma. Don't know. Hmm. Okay. Also, I want to raise in prayer Sally Card. Um, that she feels better. Each and every day, she's feeling better. Thank you, Saints. Let's pray. Lord, you've heard the prayers that have been raised, the people's names have been raised, and you know there are even prayers for people that have not been voiced. So, Lord, we pray that we leave them in your capable hands at the foot of the cross. And in your capable hands, Lord, we know you'll orchestrate healing, that you'll orchestrate uh, people to get help where they need it. Lord, we also ask, not you know, saying openly that we do not know the solution, but Please help those who are in need in this community and around the world, be it, albeit homelessness, poverty, any kind of, of uh, addiction. Lord, bring us the sources. Bring them the sources that they need to be better and the willingness to want freedom from that. Lord, let us be mindful of those who find themselves this season alone. We pray that you help us extend a loving hand to help them, make a way out of no way for them. Anyone waiting for uh, you know, news from physicians, we just ask that you be with their doctors and nurses. Help, Lord, them offset the oppressiveness of this season. And Lord, now we ask you to help us pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let's rise for a closing hymn. Uh, Take up thy cross. Verses 1, 2, and 3, page 415. Yeah.
You know, as we leave this holy place today and out into the world and our own lives and the busyness of our lives take over, I'm, rem I'm reminded of a few words that were mentioned yesterday in this presentation. A video played with a gentleman who had been facing addiction, worked out of it, regrets it, what he did in the process. What plagued him during the process is he felt not worthy. And he felt worthless. Saints, there are people in this community of every age who feel worthless, who feel hopeless, who feel that there's no way out of where they are. So I'd like to believe, saints, that you're who you are, where you are for a reason. And that reason is not just to come someplace with a beautiful sanctuary at 10 o'clock in the morning. And that Lidstone comes to Lidstone at 9 o'clock in the morning. I have to believe there's more than that. God is calling us somehow out of who we are and what we do to make a difference in the world. And I can look around and I can see people who are involved in ministry or involved in employment, et cetera, that is making a difference for people. Mm. Saints, the reason of the urgency is because people just are not going to be, in need, are just not going to be thinking about eternal life. Because for them, this is the life that's miserable for them now. Where is God? You have the ability, you have the smarts, you have the desire to know God and continue to have a relationship with God. You know by the power of the Holy Spirit the right time and the right place in where the Lord sends you. That somehow, somehow, if you can't find the words the Lord will give them to you, if you can't find the opportunity, the Lord will bring you to that opportunity to say something, to give someone a spark of hope. And it's not just inviting them to church. It's inviting them into relationship with Almighty God, for which you have a key. And that's your faith and knowledge that Jesus Christ has a message that's for everybody, not just for you. So may our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ give you what you need to be in even richer service and relationship with him. And may he bring you to those people and in those places where you have the opportunity, the inclination and the ability to just say a kind word or some action that means that there's hope yet for them. May our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ bless you and keep you. May he make his countenance to shine upon you and give you his peace, clarity, and his grace. We ask all this in his holy, precious name. Amen. Go now in peace. Thank you.